Welcome to another video. I am the Starman. Now, if you saw my video on the Geminid Meteor Shower, I gave you some good tips on where to look, how to find them in the sky, and what, what you need to do to give you a good chance of seeing them in that video. But what I didn't do is tell you how you can get a photograph of them. Now, this video here, I'm going to be telling you how to photograph the meteors. Now, this could apply to any meteor shower, not just the Geminids, but any of the annual meteor showers that we have during the year. So, as you might be able to tell, I'm back here again in my favourite place again, Lytham, where I was for that video, where I showed you how to find where the Geminid meteors are coming from. You can see the windmill behind me there. And uh, it's very important to get to somewhere really, really dark. And I mean, get away from as many streetlights as you can. You want to go somewhere where there's no streetlights at all, if you can. If you live in the country, that's really, really good. Um, then you're on a winner. But as you can see, I'm here down in Lytham. This is really probably the best place for me. Or it's one of the best places because behind me now, we've got the Ribble Estuary and that looks over towards Southport and Liverpool and uh, the, the lights are quite far away so although there is a glow um, it is relatively dark and what I want to do is I want to go back out onto the jetty again where I was last time and I want to show you how I might set up a shot to try and capture Geminid meteors and use the jetty as a foreground and I'll go through all the settings that you need to do to give yourself a good chance of capturing a Geminid meteor. Okay, so I've now come down onto the promenade and I just want to show you. If you look behind me, you can see there's obviously lights, street lights and all sorts of things behind me. But I just want to show you the view over the estuary, just to show you just how dark it is compared okay, to Okay, so I'm just panning around now so you can see the, uh, the promenade there. And as I come out this way, you can see now, look at that. Can you see them lights in the distance? That's Southport and Liverpool. There's a glow coming from over there, but it's pretty dark, and that's the way that we're going to be facing. Okay, so I'm just down here by Lytham RNLI, and normally I hate these lights here, but I want to use this one just to show you what I'm using. Now, this is my setup here. I've got my Nikon D850 here, which is a full frame camera. And the lens I've got on it is a 24 to 70 f 2.8. And what you want to do is for meteors is you want to use the widest lens that you've got to give yourself the best chance of capturing them on camera. Now, it is not easy at all to capture meteors on camera. It really isn't. Yeah, these meteors are really pesky, you know. They're very, very good at just missing your camera when you see them in the sky. And I also want to tell you about how to take photographs with a wide lens on a fixed tripod and to avoid star trailing you need to use a certain exposure and the way to do that is you want to use the 500 rule now with this lens on my camera if i divide 500 by 24 which is the focal length of this lens i get about 20 21 which means that i can use a shutter speed of 20 seconds and I won't have any significant star trailing. Now, what I tend to do is I tend to go a little bit less than that. I tend to go down to 15 just to play it safe. Now, the thing is, if you have a crop sensor camera, something like an 18 to 55, you need to imagine that as if it was on a full frame. So 18 times 1.5 is about 27. So you need to divide 500 by 27. I think it gives you about 18 seconds. So you need to expose for no longer than 18 seconds to avoid star trailing using a crop sensor camera. So what you... Okay, so now that I've explained a little bit about the exposures that you need to use for different lenses, I'm gonna head out now onto the jetty. There's a tide marker at the end, which I think would make a really nice composition with the night sky behind it. And if there happened to be a meter in the sky, it would make a really nice shot. So I'm gonna head down there now and I'm gonna talk you through the composition and the settings to capture meteors. Okay, so I'm now at the end of the jetty and I've just set the camera up looking towards the tide marker, which is on the end of the jetty. And the tide does look to be coming in a little bit as well. And what I've done is I've just taken a, a picture now and I want to show you that picture on the screen. 
Right, OK, so you can see the, the picture now. And this is quite a popular spot for photographers, this, because when the tide comes in, it looks really, really nice coming around this, the tide mark and, and the jetty as well. But the thing is, can you see how bright that sky is in the background? This is what I mean with a long exposure, looking towards those lights over there. It's, uh, it's really blown out some of those lights. And this was an eight second exposure at ISO 1600. Now then, I would have to have a pretty bright meteor to, to light up that sky behind there at that exposure. If I bump that up anymore, it's going to cause all kinds of problems. So what I'm going to do is, I am not going to come down here to photograph the meteors because it's just too bright. This is just giving you an idea of something that you could use as a foreground, but hopefully you will have a lot darker sky than me because as you can see just an eight second exposure there <laughs> ISO 1600 which I think is a little bit low for meteors yeah so as you can see problems so as you can see I'm struggling here because the background sky is so bright that I can't use a very high ISO without dialing the exposure right down but that would mean having to take loads and loads of pictures every minute and I don't really want to do that. Ideally, you want to have your camera set to take the exposure for the lens. So if you're using a 24 millimeter lens on a full frame camera like me, 15 to 20 seconds. And you want to whack your eyes up as much as possible. Um, and that's why it's so important to go somewhere really, really dark. Now, it's obvious that I'm not going to be able to do much down here because I just think it's too bright. And having to dial the exposure down to about two with four seconds it's not going to give me much chance to capture a meteor but, but I hope I've given you a good idea about what you need to do and once you do have that set up your exposure set up and you're happy with it plug in an interval timer and just lock the shutter down put your camera into drive mode and lock your shutter down and just let your camera fire away for as long as the battery will last for and then you know you can go and have a cup of tea or whatever uh, maybe you're just sticking it out in the back garden, just point it straight up at the sky. Anything, just to give you a chance to capture some meteors. So there you go, I hope I've given you a good idea about the settings that you need to use to capture not just these Geminid meteors, but any meteors really. And, and anyway, if you happen to take a lot of exposures and you don't capture a meteor, you can put all the pictures together into a stacking program and make them into a nice star trail. So there's something else. That's a little bonus that you can get out of doing this type of photography. So there you go. I hope you like the video. And if you do, hit the like button and also hit subscribe and tick the bell for notifications of new videos. And I will see you again next time.